Hi there, this is I Am with Eric Faria. I am your host, Eric Faria, and today with me I have Regina Arabia. She's a yoga instructor, and it's my pleasure to have you here today. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And I would like to begin by asking, what actually brought you into yoga? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, this goes back a long time ago, 20 years plus ago. Um, I was walking around in uh, my gym where mm. I used to exercise, and I noticed that they had a new class mm. that just had begun, and it was yoga. Oh. So I said, oh my goodness, I've always wanted to try yoga class, so mm -hmm. I'm going to hop into one of those. And during that time, I was going through a lot of changes in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting some headaches that were very similar to migraines, mm. where I would feel a little bit nauseous. And um, I had to go to the room and just relax because no medicine was working. So I tried the class that day, and amazingly enough, towards the end, the headache mm -hmm. had disappeared. Oh, wow. So I liked how I felt <laughs> and thought it was amazing and um, started going back to it. So some days, obviously, I was fine. Other days, I wasn't. But I noticed an improvement in the way I was able to relax, mm -hmm. just deep breathing. Uh, that really got me back into the studio more and more often. So that's how I began. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. that was 20 years ago. Y yes. About. About. <laughs> Even more. <laughs> Even more. Okay. So you were talking about the migraines and how they just went away. Yeah. And um, I'm interested because I've done yoga once, like for one month. So one time I, I went for a month. I did daily or probably like four times a week. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Yeah. And I, and I noticed a very big difference in like my sleep and my well-being just in general. I had more energy, for example. And I'm curious to know who would be the ideal candidate, quote unquote, for yoga. Is there one <laughs> for people who don't know maybe much about yoga? Yeah. Well, I would imagine that because nowadays there is a lot of stress, just the, da the daily lives, just right. keeping up with uh, daily life can be a little bit stressful. Mm -hmm. um, not only um, if you are going to school, but if you are at work, um, if you have a family, if you're raising children, it's, we have very busy lives. Right. So what uh, yoga promotes is a balance, mm -hmm. a little bit of time away from your daily routine mm -hmm. just to check in with yourself. Right. And each one of us will find our own balance. Mm -hmm. So the, the con candidate, the proper candidate for a yoga class is just a person who lives in modern society. <laughs> <laughs> so you do not have to go all the way to India to do yoga and meditate. You can do it here and find just the time in your, you know, day-to-day -day life. Absolutely. Right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. I, I know it's, a, it's challenging sometimes yeah. to be able to do that. Uh, depending on the region where you live, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, once a week to begin yeah. would be wonderful and commit to that once a week. Oh, wow. And then the changes will begin slowly, mm -hmm. but for sure. <laughs> got it, got it. So another big aspect of yoga that I have mm -hmm. noticed is the spiritual practice, right? Mm -hmm. Because right. it is, in a way, um, putting the attention on you and centering your thoughts and being in touch with who you are. So what is that aspect for you? Yeah, that's, that's a very profound question. It can be a very profound answer as well because... When I began my practice, I started it, I was very curious about yoga. Something uh, was really attracting me to that practice. Mm. Uh, but the effects was physical for me. So the headaches yeah. started going away and eventually I didn't have them anymore. 
But quickly, I began um, interest in the philosophy part of yoga, mm -hmm. that it's not only a practice uh, that it's physical, but right. it's also a, uh, a practice that will invite you to be curious about spirituality and about how the mind works and the connection of all of it, the mind, the spirit, and the body. Um, it, it opened doors for me mm -hmm. in that direction. Nice. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. And um, I know that we talked about this a little bit before, but as a woman, right, uh -huh. it's very hard, I see sometimes, for women to balance, you know, their careers, their families, and all of that, it can get very confused uh, sometimes if you are, for example, taking care of your family for a long time mm -hmm. and then you want to go back into the workforce, right? Right, exactly. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience with that, balancing all of those aspects, those roles <laughs> in your life? Yeah, that, that is very challenging and I think that for each one of us it can be a different uh, journey. Uh, for me, I, I, have, I had four children, I, of course now they are all grown and adults and out of the house, but while they were growing up I felt that I chose to be very involved in their upbringing, so I, all my jobs were, um, um, were very much, so they, had, they were my first. Right, um, your priority. My priority, exactly, yes. they were my priority. So. Uh, when I was able to take, lead, um, bring them to school, then I began a career that was part-time. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult at some times mm -hmm. because then I would get sick and I had mm -hmm. to resume coming back home to take care of them. And it's, it's difficult. It's a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. And how, after, how did they, after they moved out of the house, what did you what did you do for yourself now that you saw that they were growing up and they were going to leave <laughs> what was the choice or what did you say to yourself or do oh yes yeah. so during that time of transition while when they started leaving to go to college and they had schedules that were permitting myself uh, to open up to different options then i went back to work mhm mm so I had my own business yes. for some time, uh, which was wonderful. Uh, I was able to um, I was able to have the business and be present whenever I needed to be mm -hmm. as well. So I could work from home right. a lot of the times. Um, so that was definitely one a good option that I found that it worked very well for me. Mm -hmm. And um, you also mentioned that there was some changes also mm -hmm. when you had to move from the Midwest to right. New York, right? Because originally you moved from New York to the Midwest and then you made the way back, right? Exactly. So How did that change things for you? Also? Yeah, um, we moved from the Midwest to the New York area during a time where there was a downturn of the economy. Mm -hmm. So we, we really didn't have much of a choice. Right. It was either stay there and uh, then lose the job that my husband had at the time mm -hmm. or move with the, new, uh, with the bank. Right. So when we moved, uh, it was a transitional time for me, not only because we were changing the regions where we lived, but also because part of my family was staying behind. Mm -hmm. uh, they had already formed um, their lives there. Right. So, but once we moved uh, to a different region because of work, uh, a few months later, my husband uh, lost his job. Oh. So it was wow. really difficult then. We, had to, we were transitioning not only from not um, not bringing the family with us, but we were changing cities, states, and they, and then quickly after the rug was pulled away from our feet, mm -hmm. uh, and we had to begin reinventing ourselves. So what do we do now? You right. know, so it was a, a little bit difficult 
to navigate those waters during times that for us personally became sort of a turmoil. Right, right. Yeah. And I feel very lucky that I had a practice that was supporting me during those difficult times. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I was very much into my yoga practice, mm -hmm. uh, spiritual practice. But from that point on, I decided that perhaps I'd like to deepen this practice. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's when you decided to become a yoga instructor? Exactly. That's when I went ahead and um, certified as a yoga instructor. I took the certification uh, to be a yoga instructor and share mm -hmm. what my passion was for so many years and what I truly believe to be a practice that uh, saved me during those very difficult times. Wow, wow. So it had that much of an effect on you? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Is there anything else that you do, Regina, on like a daily basis uh, on the spiritual side, on mm -hmm. a spiritual practice that you might have? Yeah, actually, I do have a meditation practice mm -hmm. um, that I do every day. Um, I also like to uh, study the Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. So I've been studying the Course in, in Miracles since 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy that practice very much so, yeah. and that discipline. Um, I use that on my daily meditation, right. the teachings of the Course in Miracle, Miracles. Um, and I continue with my studies of yoga nice. as well. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Um, and yeah, that's I actually have studied A Course in Miracles for a while, mm -hmm. and I remember that the daily practice that they had, right, 365, one for each day of the year <laughs> at the end, right. they were very helpful in getting you present, getting you into the moment, and starting your day, because that was the first thing that I used to do. Mm -hmm. Every morning when I woke up, I did the the lesson. The lesson. Yes, yes, exactly. I yeah. Sometimes I follow the lessons um, consecutively. Sometimes I just do the workbook. I do oh. some readings. Yeah. Sometimes I listen to podcasts. Mm. Uh, but it is very important for me to connect somehow, even if it's only five minutes right. every day, with um, some kind of a meditation practice. Mm -hmm. And it is like. Um, like I hear my teacher say, it's like building a spiritual muscle. Yes. You know, those five minutes. <laughs> like going to the gym, right? Yes, But the exactly. spiritual gym. <laughs> exactly, yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's very, very important. So when do you believe that your um, spirituality uh, manifested itself in your life? Was it at a young age? Was it during your yeah. teenage years? Your, when you were in your 20s, in your 30s? When do you think oh. it started? That's an interesting question. I believe that I was in my teens when I got my first book on uh, Buddhism. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I signed up for a book club mm -hmm. and I became involved into um, discussions with friends and my family about different things, different mm -hmm. books. And I was very interested in spirituality even then. Even then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Was your family religious at all? No, not necessarily. Okay. Not very religious at all. Okay. No. My father was um, instrumental in getting me interested mm -hmm. in different types of spirituality practices. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he actually turned the switch on my curiosity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I give him that credit. And uh, so then for some years, I was not reading much about it. What was once I got back um, into yoga that I became interested again. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that you mentioned curiosity because for me, um, I did not come from a religious family at all. Uh -huh. So my curiosity was actually what got me to later on in life, like say around also my teenage years, <laughs> uh, to actually develop some sort of just questions about 
what is, you know, the world that we live in, you know, um, who is in the world with me, what are the major religions of the world, and I just wanted to investigate mm -hmm. and to actually just get to know uh, what was for me and also what, what wasn't for me, uh -huh. right? So yeah. it's, it's interesting that, you know, curiosity tends to be something that I feel like we sometimes don't develop as much in children uh, when you're a kid, right, uh, letting someone be, choose their own path, we probably sometimes tell them what path to go through. Mm -hmm. And I think that might actually hinder their growth. I don't know. That's what I, that's what I get sometimes. Uh -huh. what, what do you think? What was the thing that you taught your children in regards to spirituality, for example? Yeah. Well, I gave him the basics of um, spirituality. So even though my family wasn't uh, one that would attend church every mm -hmm. every every week, or um, or talked about uh, religion or spirituality much at right. home, um, they gave us the basic uh, of uh, we were Catholics. Mm -hmm. So um, at that point, we went to. Um, CCD, which was the religious education after school. Yeah. So we've learned a little bit about um, the Catholic religion, yep. you know, in Christianity. Um, so f I did the same with my family. So we all they grew up having um, having some studies. They, they went to school and then after school they would go to CCD and mm -hmm. learned a little bit about religious education. And at home I gave him different ideas about different religions as well. Mm -hmm. and, and spirituality, the practice was based on how do you feel about this and mm. how are we going to uh, listen to our own hearts in regards to that. Nice. And then from there we developed a conversation that would, I think, helped. That's very good. That's very good. So you mentioned that uh, they're now all adults, right? They are all, all adults. Of, all of them. And do you think that um, the practice of spirituality or religion uh, or faith, right, um, regardless of religion, yeah. do you think that it's part of their lives nowadays, now that they are adults and have their own lives? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I believe so in some degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you think they, they go about it? Is it through yoga? Is it through art, music, painting? What um, do you think is I present? Think it's, I think it for, for each one of them is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wouldn't be able to speak exactly, you know, how it is. Right, right. But I have a feeling that for for a couple of them, uh, they have a meditation practice. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's good. And um, what do you think is the connection? Because you do yoga and you talked about, you know, yeah. taking care of yourself and your mm -hmm. being. What do you think would be the connection between, like, all of us? What do you think is the thing that connects us as human beings, regardless of your religion or your faith or your spiritual practice? Uh -huh. um, for you personally. For me personally. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a very interesting question. Um, what connects us? here as a human mm -hmm. from the perspective of having this human experience is the fact that we that we are in community first mm -hmm. of all right yeah. so I believe that we can all support one another somehow and whether it is in a um, in a level that you can communicate with, but on a level of the spirit. So that connection and exists whether or not you are speaking about it. Mm -hmm. So does that, is that seem to be 
too vague for you, this answer? No, I think it actually, it's, pr it's pretty good because it varies, right, uh -huh. from one person to another. Yeah. For example, I believe that because we're all here, mm -hmm. we're all humans, right, that regardless of our experiences, I, you know, we're here in Mamaroneck, New York. Right. But there might be somebody, I don't know, in Tokyo, Japan, who I'm connected to and who has a similar story to mine, but I've never met that person. Mm -hmm. So it's just the fact that we are all humans, right? The, the humanity. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I find that very interesting that sometimes what we do here affects somebody on the other side of the world that we might never meet in this life. That's very true. Right? That is very true. Yeah, it's kind of like what they say about the, the butterfly effect, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Well, it's, it's interesting that you're saying this because um, obviously you can be inspired by somebody else's lives. Right. And what seemed to be uh, a challenge for someone right now may, may have been a challenge for me or may still be a challenge for me. Yeah. So because we are all going through this human experience, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily mean that even though I feel like I have a spiritual practice, that I'm not going to be hit by some new challenges in life, right? right? And um, I probably will feel more prepared to know how to navigate through those challenges. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not, not necessarily they will not happen, <laughs> right? Right, it's so true because yeah. I feel like the more tools you have, the easier it is perhaps to get out of those challenges mm -hmm. that life throws at you because right. life is going to happen exactly. anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of knowing how to navigate them. Right. And I feel like even though I don't have a spiritual practice like yours, for example, with yoga on uh, the daily, right? I still feel like with all the tools that I've been able to acquire in this lifetime so far, that it's easier. Like things that bothered me even five or six or seven years ago don't bother, don't bother me anymore. Or it's just so much easier to get through them. And it was so dramatic before, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> and now it's just, it's just easy. It's just kind of like learning how to swim, for example. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, you're going to be hit if you're like at, in the ocean by the waves. And then, you know, you're going to be like, oh, I'm not going to go back <laughs> in the ocean because it's going to happen again. <laughs> but then you just realize if I go with the flow of the water and I know that a wave is coming and I can just go under it, it's easier. Right. Right? Exactly. So, exactly. yeah, it's like it's the flow of life. And I think everybody, mm -hmm. regardless of whether they have a spiritual practice, whether they have um, prayer, meditation, whatever it is, yoga, right? They are searching. I, I feel mm -hmm. like we are all in our own way searching for something. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah. And, um, and it's interesting because um, luckily right now, the way I see um, with internet and yeah. the availability of materials that we have, there is a lot out there, you know, and, and somehow it's a lot easier to access that information than it was, let's say, 50 years ago or 30 years ago. Right. Um, because there are such a variety of different information out there, um, we have to sort of see what works for you, for me, you yeah. know? Um, and then stick with it for some time, for at least 30 days, <laughs> <laughs> and see how that works, Yeah. right, as a tool that um, you can develop to be able to have not only to go for day to day, but also to navigate those moments that are really, really challenging uh, that can be in someone's life. It's true. And that we all go through at one point or another. Exactly. Right? Exactly. If you could mm -hmm. say something to your mm -hmm. younger self. Yeah. <laughs> let's say uh, you said you got married at 23, correct? Yes. So if you could say something to your 23-year-old, right. if you had a meeting with you as a 23-year-old, <laughs> what would you say to her? Um, 
Okay. In terms of what you've learned so far in life, right? Yeah. What would you say to that young woman? I would say to that young woman that she actually can be sure that even though she believes that she doesn't have really large wings, that she definitely does. Oh. And to be patient mm. that one day those wings are going to spread and she's going to really fly high. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice. Very good. Thank so, you. And to end, uh -huh. since the show is called I Am. Okay. Yeah. My last question for you is, if you had to say, if you had to define yourself mm -hmm. at this moment in time, yeah. and I asked you, who are you? What would be your answer? <laughs> who are you, Regina? Who are? Well, um, on, a, on a superficial level, mm -hmm. I am Regina Arabia. I am right now a yoga instructor. Um, I am the mother of four. I am married to uh, my best friend, companion uh, for many, many years. I live in the United States. I am um, a citizen of the United States and Brazil as well. Mm -hmm. But on a more profound level, on a deeper level, I am that. I am um, a connection and I'm connected not only to God, but to all of, all of us here and all. That's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Regina, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being our first guest. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and chat and have this conversation with you. My pleasure. I truly enjoy very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'll see you soon. And thank you mm -hmm. for everybody. Thank yes, you. thank Namaste. you. <laughs> and thank you for everybody watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.